Cell 411 is a free app for Android and iOS that replaces government-controlled 911. Cell 411 allows you to preset a group of friends or private organizations to show up in any emergency. Cell 411 is a nightmare for the state because it proves their so-called services aren't needed. Cell 411 has had thousands of installs, and of course it's covered by the BitCot No Government License. Cell 411 because your friends won't shoot you when you're in trouble. Without the government, who would build the emergency services? You and Cell 411. Get it today at Get Cell. Cell411.com. That's getcell411.com. Want caviar sound on a cat food budget? Creamy Radio Audio by the Freedom Fiends has great free tips so you can sound like a pro without spending like one. The most powerful form of human communication is one person speaking to another. But if people have to suffer through your sound, they'll change the channel and miss your message. Creamy Radio Audio will help you speak to the world with sound that will make people want to keep listening. Check out CreamyRadioAudio.com. That's CreamyRadioAudio.com. So, I'm going to say again, because this is the thing that blows everybody's mind right off the bat, this is not direct democracy. Absolutely not. Not a chance. I would, I would expect to be crucified, and I don't mean that figuratively. If I was suggesting direct democracy, Dave would get the cross... Jeremy can get the nails, and Andre can hold me down. There's no way <laughs> I, would, I would suggest I would. direct democracy. That's insanity. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 104th episode of the Seeds of Liberty podcast. As always, we are covered by a BIPCOT no government license. This allows reuse by anyone except governments and the agents thereof. You can Mm. find out more information about this at BIPCOT.org. So we are back. I am Jeremy. I'm joined, as always, by Dave. Andre is here this week. What's up, guys? Hey. What's going on, man? Uh, not much, you know, same old, same old. And <laughs> this week we are joined by a returning guest uh, and a good friend of the show, our friend Donnie Gebert, who is back with a new project he's been working on, uh, which is called U2030, and it is a plan to automate Congress, um, which is the first time he presented this idea to me. I just, I kind of just shook my head. I did not understand at all. I'm like, but we're, we're anarchists. I'm so confused. Um, but <laughs> he has a very interesting plan. So he's, uh, he's, he's ready to launch this baby. So we had him, we're having him on to talk about. So Donnie, man, how are you, my friend? Well, hello, gentlemen. <laughs> I've hey, talked to, I haven't talked to Andre in about a year, so I don't know where rock he's been hiding under, but it's definitely not the rock I've been hiding under. He's, so. been, he's been yeah, under the Seeds of Liberty rock. <laughs> yeah, he's been around yeah, here for the past few months. Yeah, I've been wandering around my garage and messing with my whiteboard. So, Are you, you're turning mm. into Glenn Beck? <laughs> Is that what's going on? No, no, <laughs> no, no, Beck, no, Jim Jones, uh, no real Kool Aid consumption at all. Just <laughs> me, myself, and my thoughts. All right, so well, I guess we should start off. Do you? How, how would you like to begin uh, describing your project here to us, Donny? Uh, I don't know where well, you're going to lead off with. The, sh- the short version is automate Congress. Um, well, yeah, I got kinda that. Came, but <laughs> It, it kind of came from the fight for 15 thing of we're getting rid of middlemen with kiosks. And, you know, because you know, if you're going to make yourself too expensive and too, you know, economically inefficient, yeah. your, your job is going to get automated out of existence. Well, yeah, low thought- paying jobs and high paying jobs are going to be the first ones to go. Those are the first ones to get roboticized because they're the most menial, believe it or not. Yep. Well, but at the same time, how about the most annoying? How about the yeah. most counterproductive? How about the, the least efficient and most corrupt? Like, what if we could yeah. automate that job? Well, so would you rather automate uh, your accountant or trust some guy with all of your accounting? I think most people are going to pick that automation. Yeah, I, I, I mean, a lot of people will take an automated solution, but there are people who are convinced that certain things can't be automated. So the idea of automating legislation, it's kind of bizarre for a lot of people, but a lot of people think, oh, I don't know how to be a congressman, therefore... I couldn't do it myself. What I would have to say to that is, do you want to behave like a congressman? 
because I mean, and not get away with it. I was going to say, based on the based on the stories, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think so at all. <laughs> that would be right. So, if you were in a position where you could automate the entire process of legislation, would you do it? And I think you would, not just for removing the inefficiency out of it, but for putting the direct control in it. So I'm going to say again, because this is the thing that blows everybody's mind right off the bat. This is not direct democracy. Absolutely not. Not a chance. I would, I would expect to be crucified. And I don't mean that figuratively. If I was suggesting direct democracy, Dave would get the cross. Jeremy can get the nails and Andre can hold me down. There's no way I would suggest direct democracy. That's insanity. What this is? Do I get the hammer, the nails in too, or do, do do I just get to fetch them? Because no, uh, you guys get to flip for that. Oh man! So, um, it's the concept is a direct republic. You're acting as your own legis- legislator, and then what would that look like? How would you deal with all of the things in the current system that change based on that change? And well, then you, I mean, literally, you have to start thinking. Okay, well, it does throw the judiciary into a loop, but what would the business cycle happen, right? Any kind of changes we make to the laws are so difficult to make because they're pragmatically impossible. So this whole system kind of arises on its own by popular support, completely outside of what's going on right now. And if at any point we get to the amount of people, the amount of understanding, whatever, to where people want to do this, like a Bernie campaign, I mean, Bernie and Donald, they're, they're whole flukes. Both of them are, are flukes of nature, except that's the way people are right now. They're really pissed off and they're not accepting what's going on. But changing all of those things is very difficult. So without putting something else in place, offering something else different, even to get the ball rolling, it's almost impossible because people are pragmatic at the end of the day. Well, well I, I, don't, I don't know about all that. I'd like to think that people are pragmatic, but based on the choices people make, I don't know if pragmatism is really the word I would choose to, well, to use for them. It, it's pragmatic if you can get away with it. Okay, mm-hmm. murdering someone is pragmatic if somebody's not going to come and, and execute you for it or, or call you off to jail. So I, I'm just saying in a pragmatic way, people get away with a lot of stuff living in the first world because, you know, if they do something stupid, they're not going to die of the infection. They're going to, you know, get their arm mended and they're going to survive their own stupidity. Hopefully they'll be smarter for it. But people okay. are, are pragmatic beings. If they're not, if they're hungry, they're not really going to worry too much about laws. They might steal food to, to eat. So there's a level of pragmatism on the base okay. level. And then there's a level of um, principle level where civil society really has to live. And we live in the civil place. People get away with stupid stuff. Okay, yeah, I see what I, you're saying. I'm sorry. Go I ahead. have a question. So, base and this is just based on my understanding. What you said. So it's not a direct democracy, but each person is their own legislature. Is their own yep. legislator. Yep. So how so, is that not a direct democracy, though? Okay. So now that would assume that we're all sitting in the floor of Congress and we're going to vote on things. We're not. We're all going to go join our own committees, and we're going to directly fund. All of the programs that we're going to fund, and you can basically sit on as many oh, okay, as you all right, want to now, okay, now to. I understand what you're saying. Now See, I understand. If okay. everybody's their own legislator, oh, mm-hmm. there's no special animal to collect taxes. So now everything is: I want to put my money here, you put your money there, and I'm just trying to give this a structure. I mean, honestly, it's a it's a pretty new concept because it doesn't even work without a. Plan. No, no. I mean, I this is going to be rough to figure out this dis- this deconstruction, this pulling out of the state. You know. Right. So if you think about the way blockchain works, it's it's just an open records ledger. It's a right. very high tech system to do a very low tech thing. It's like it's like what Martin Luther did. He put all this his theses on the door. That's all blockchain does. It's a public ledger that lets everybody see everything. Except you don't yeah, have to go exactly. to the church. You don't have to go to the church to see the the theses. You, uh, you Thank can goodness. just download them on an app. You can look at them on the web. It's it's fine. The reason we have representatives is because we all can't go to Washington and do this shit ourselves. Well, yes, we can now. So when you start thinking about replacing those people and putting yourself in there, what changes from that? Well, any any uh, federal program that doesn't have popular support never gets funded. It never gets off the ground. And whatever rules it needs to do, it's going to have by the people who are funding it. And I won't have anything to do with it. Do you think less than, uh, well, okay. do you think less than savory characters might try to write her legislation stuff like put it all try to wrap them into huge packages 
And are you going to support it after until you've read it or no? Because you got to remember, he's they got to get your money. They you they have to convince you that this is a good thing that we should all go and do. Most people support the but, state right now. Well, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Well, so okay, so so let me start. Let me start from scratch here. The first thing that we do, and we'll kill system, you almost if you you know uh, qu- question so, them on it. So think about this running concurrently. We're all going to do this on our own. This is our solution. This isn't Washington's solution. So we all pile into this system, and we start verifying that you're you. That's it. We're going to do like a fingerprint plus your life lock plus uh, plus like Equifax, right? Your credit score. You can do whatever transacting you want with this public token. And if you want to show the transaction, it's done in the open. And certain transactions by law would be done in the open because we don't let that kind of shit go on, right? Like having a private defense agency, that, that could really get out of hand really quick. So the people who are running the private defense agency are of course going to demand that all of the transacting be done on the blockchain. It be done in the open so that everybody can see what's going on. You see where the money goes, you see who contributed. But if you wanted to turn that token off and transact with it privately, you could still do that. And the credit score would, would accumulate. The point is, is that the things that we do in public would be done in public and in the open, completely in the open, like on a blockchain. I don't once, know, you man. Start, once you start making these changes, the rules that you end up, basically it becomes a we're going to agree on Title 18 minus the nonsense, right? There's 80% of people in prison are there for nonviolent drug offenses or some nonsense like that. So those laws can't get passed because you're not going to sign up for them. Title 18 is almost coercion, okay? Murder, rape, theft, all <laughs> no, these no, things. No, no, all government is coercion. No, listen, well, all listen, state listen, there's law, listen, there's a big difference between laws and state, okay? There's going to be a no murder law, whether you like it or not. And if you're a murderer, fuck you, you're dead. It's not going to matter. So there's certain, like, a, the palette of negative rights that we all know and respect as humans and have done so for thousands of years. It was basic common law procedure. That was about it. But if you get a little Brayan law in there, now it's open market. You get to choose your judge instead of your judge being provided to you by the state with the state's rules. It works a lot better if you do it on your own level. It's it's a little complicated up front. It sounds complicated, right? But it, you really don't have to convince people to well, not murder. They sign up for that law real quick. Well, yeah. I, again, I, I well, you and I have talked about this a little bit leading as you were working on this project. But I, I mean, based on what you've said before, I mean, I, I'm still coming away with more questions though, because I mean, uh, yep. You would say you, you would said ori- you would said originally, you know, once you get to the to enough people, like. Like what kind of numbers are required to, to to make this to make this work? As well, okay. As far as work and societal change are concerned, they kind of go hand in hand. If you have a popular yes. movement of people, or right for all the reasons that all of these things get privately funded when the government stops funding them, that's that's what, how this all goes down. Really, like the Berlin Wall, it's going to be changed, and that's the way it is. And all the laws get broken, and then they get rewritten, and that's it. Or we turn it into a civil war, one voting cycle at a time, and it just seems like a bad idea. Okay, but that still doesn't answer the question. Like, <laughs> what, okay, what, so be specific. What, what question are you looking about, at? Like, about, what part of the, about, about the numbers? <laughs> like, what is required? Okay, so in, I think you're America, trying to fix a Congress in America, problem. 40 right? or, in America, forty or fifty million. No, it's not a Congress problem. Listen, humans put in that position where they have this power to deal with all of these vast amounts of resources. Can't. And then we, ex- we, yeah, listen, well, the thing is, you, yeah, they can, but then you're Ron Paul, right? You go up there, you don't take much or any of the money, not to any effect where, where corruption ever becomes a question, but you're completely ineffective. You're just wandering around the town being the pillar of virtue. And that's it. You didn't get any, he didn't get anything done when he was there other than remind everyone that they were shitty. Well, you and, know, the, and that's that, not that, disrespect that, towards Ron Paul at all. Well, yeah, that, that did serve all. a purpose, though. That that does serve a purpose every once in a while. I think we pointed that out yeah, in a right. recent episode. Every once in a while, I didn't, say, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't say I didn't say he didn't serve a purpose. I'm just saying. Well, that I'm just saying as that far I, as being in Congress, he was ineffective as a Congress. No, but I, I'm saying he might have got some money back for his constituency. But other than that, no, no, he, he was just kind of the odd man out. I know, I, I get that. I'm, but I'm saying that particular action, especially in that circumstance, actually is a is a valuable function. Somebody oh, does need yeah, to be that. Don't get me wrong. I value it. Was just a pragmatic <laughs> statement. He didn't I, get anything done. In no, no. I, I, I not. He wasn't the greatest. Like I, I, I'm trying to convince myself. I want to go down to Clute one of these days and just bump into him like random. Like I'm gonna sit at the drugstore and just wait. 
until Ron Paul shows up and shake his hand or something. Oh, well, <laughs> not in a creepy way. No, I, I, I get that's what you're that's I, exceptionally creepy. But I, yeah, it, no, I got you. Okay. All right. So, so, you see, all right. So hold on a second though. Let's go. Let's, let's back, let's back up a little bit. You, you so you said 40 yeah. to 50 million you're figuring in, in, in this. Uh, that's what, that's geographical usually what it location. takes. Oh, well, that's, okay. No, well, see, yeah, sure. I would argue. Population size. Well, I, well, I see. Well, I, see, I, you're I, still thinking after a state collapse, this ge- this artificial geographical border still. Well, no, no, be there. I don't even. Oh, no, yeah? no, no, no this Russia. this is not talking about a state collapse, though. This right, Donnie? This this you're no. you're talking about well, working separately of there's just walk essentially well, at least as far as I understand. I mean, and obviously, correct me if I'm wrong here, but this is more of this amount of people walking away from the current state and and basically going at it going at it on on their on their on their own until there's enough popular support for everybody to do it is that kind of this idea right yeah it it, that's basically it all societal change regardless of what organizational system you use to try and do that it requires a good chunk of people to even make that happen so if you don't have that well, mass appeal, it doesn't really matter. We've we have we've talked about that extensively on this show before, and and Dave's point. Dave was the, I believe the first one to point it out, and he's 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 right that historically speaking, for a cultural change, it usually only usually only takes about ten percent, but th- that ten percent needs to be working at an almost religious level yeah, in that, order in that, order that to shift the culture. Has to be working. That ten percent historically was always working at a very moneyed level. If no, think about it. Eh, not well, necessarily. Money interests are always at no, no, play no, 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 in society. No, no, I'm not saying moneyed interest. I'm saying the people that were making the changes historically had resources to do so. No, no. the vast majority of humans didn't. Not necessarily. No, no, not necessarily. Though, I mean, you take for you take for example. I mean, the easiest example for for people in this geographical location, as it is, is is the so called American Revolution. Where the, that's where the, the term three percenter came from, because originally that's all it was. There was only three percent of the people. The rest of the people either couldn't care or were loyal to the, or were still loyal to the crown, or right, were too scared. Were too scared to make a decision. And then it, and 3% then it, percent for fighting. No, no, but that, but that's that's what it, it takes. That, it, but those people, they didn't have a lot of money, but they right. they were the ones that had. But they had they had a religious um, level you know of commitment support, to it. Yeah, but. Listen, three percent of the population was fighting. How many were supporting that three percent? Not it's quite. Usually, that, to be to, it's be, to begin, no, it wasn't. To it's begin, it wasn't. To, one. to begin, it wasn't, and that that was proven out by the the later what actually what? happened. Well, with it's the, like the guy that goes out in the yeah, middle but, of the well, no, field that was, and starts dancing, listen, you know, and then everyone starts dancing. It's, listen, I mean, all of these same. guys, if if they were staying at home, they would have had to hunt for where they eat. So they went wherever they were going, and they hunted where they ate. It, it, I'm not saying that there's all that much support. I'm saying as a rule, when you have a soldier in the field, you have 10 people supporting him at a minimum. For the American military, it's like 25. So even though there were 3% of the people fighting, they had popular, listen, every time they showed up in a town, they weren't driven out of town by the locals. That might have happened in some isolated incidents, but it wasn't, it didn't, not enough to make the history books where the rebels were tossed from town to town looking for a safe port. No, 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 but the, the but, countryside was but, leaving them alone. Oh no, oh no, but again, but you, but you're 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 con, you're conflating you're conflating them not throwing them out of town with them actually supporting them. It's that, that they don't have to support them; they could be indifferent, and that's the point. A lot but, of people but were for indifferent. Certain function, a lot of people were indifferent. They were self sufficient. A lot of a lot of people were indifferent. They be, that that was borne out with what actually happened with the con, with the damn constitution and the fact that there actually was a lot of people who were who were just, horribly against the okay. entire process because they weren't happy with everything how everything went down in the first. First place um but okay so but e- but even still so even if we take your four like that that we got off track there because if we take your four you know even if we get a higher number you take 40 50 okay now when you're talking about you know people you know funding whatever they want to fund so you don't have to fund the things you don't want to fund well yep. so now i guess normally some of the first uh i guess criticisms or, or questions would be what do you do with because you're still talking about this occurring in this particular geographical location correct yep sure. so so when people are <laughs> when people are when people are are forming their little committees and choosing what what it is they would like to fund you're still talking about people spread out all over the place so what happens sure. to the people that are still in the same area that don't want to pay for these services or not you know what do you what like how like how are you going to deal with those type so of beautiful, situations. So the beautiful thing about that, I don't like relying on the state for anything, but here's the fact, it's there. 
So if we're talking about messing with the federal level of government, you're still looking at two or three other layers of other stuff. So the local stuff tends to be the stuff that you pay to use and the far away stuff tends to be, to be the, uh, it tends to be the things that you like to have and just pay for, even though they're not local, right? So defense is done at a national level. Roads are done by your county, just, just to keep it you know, intelligent. So what we're talking about is the programs that we do on the federal level, we pretty much do in a decentralized manner anyway. We're all scattered around. So by decentralizing the process, we don't really change the geography of the problem or the solution. We just give it more than one. Outlet. How do you fund an aircraft carrier voluntarily? What do you have? What do you have an aircraft carrier for in, to begin with, other than to project to power. enforce your fiat project currency? Power. Pretend I'm a military intelligence to analyst. enforce it's your there fiat to project currency. Power. Well, I don't. There to I, I'm, I'm not even. And, and if you have a military that can drive around the globe with a portable airfield, you might do that a lot. So. I'm not saying there's not going to be any aircraft carriers. I'm saying their funding and operation will be super efficient and super limited because people are not going to keep that around when there's no reason to. You can get people to give their life savings towards their defense when the Huns are at the door. But when they have to pay for bombs to be dropped in Afghanistan on complexes that we built for the Mujahideen, come to find out these, the ordinance that we dropped today, it was really expensive. What did we pay for that show? You know what I mean? Would you be paying for this nonsense? Would you have paid for the original complex that then had to be well, bought 25 no, years later? No. Probably not. No. and I, So we get to get ahead of our problems on an individual level by funding it at a societal level individually. So you're talking about decentralizing Congress, but this decentralized you know, front or whatever still interacts with the state or still determines how the state operates? Well, well, okay, listen. We're all still in the same jurisdiction. You're talking about a transit. I'm just trying to lay out the, the concept, right? The transition from one to the next is, it, let's not put the cart before the horse. Let's make sure everybody understands. This isn't a direct democracy, but it's organization without control. That's what it is. It's decentralized organization where everyone gains the agency to abstain. Good ideas get funded and bad ideas don't. That's it. That's, so that's it's the basically Kickstarter goal. on the blockchain. But for government services. It, but for government so and, and here's the thing. It's not Kickstarter for So that. how do we it's, get the government to just go, you know what, guys, we're just going to give this monopoly because, up listen, that gives us all because, our power. Because if this has a popular movement behind it, if people are tired of the way things are, then by popular demand, when enough people are in the one system – at a certain point, we start we start making intelligent yet civil demands. Like on X date, we are no longer going to fund these things, and and that the system will change. A bunch of people are going to refuse. Yes, we could boil this down to it to calling it a tax revolt, but that's kind of like calling World War II a uh, gentleman's disagreement. Like, well, it's a big. It's a much bigger scale than a tax revolt, but it's a system where people can organize to fund the shit that they want outside of the current system. And then as a group, having all of their details in order, set a date in the future and say, we're leaving, but we're not moving. And we're going to decentralize certain services amongst ourselves. You guys can pay for what you want. And then as those, if those systems manage to exist, they just become a separate system that you could have started anyway. Like this system allows for competition. It's not the two party solution. That's the problem. It's the one solution system where everybody's stuck okay. with one outcome. We but, need more than one outcome. Well, well I, I'm not going to disagree with that point, but, but, but again, if you're talking about, if you're talking about this, uh, this occurring essentially organically through the, like uh, to, to, to work separately from the current system until there's enough people that the, the current system is basically becomes obsolete, which is, I guess the, the, the you know, the, the rough outline here, right. Is that's basically what you're doing. You're building up, you're building up separate systems outside of it to, to, to make the first one obsolete. I mean, that's the idea of sure. uh, in, innovation, right? So, sure. but I, 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 like you, like I understand, you know how you get there. Maybe something you want to uh, wait <laughs> for everybody to understand the concept first. But you realize that I mean that's going to be the the biggest question because even if, I mean what you're talking about is like whether you call it a tax revolt or not. 
Uh, I mean, what, what you're talking about in that aspect is essentially non straight up non compliance with the current system, which That's I'm which happening. Well, no, no, but I, I'm all for that. Obviously, I, I I've been preaching yeah. that for 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 years now. That's that's my whole that's my whole shtick. That's what I do. That's what I go out there and try to encourage other people to do. However, if you're talking about doing that in order to create other systems, if that other if the if this if the current state apparatus is still in place through the transition period or, or e even before you get to the transition period, you know, you're still going to have to, are, are you not going to still have to deal with the current state, even on the, okay. or the local, even on the local levels, yeah. as you try to build these things that will essentially rival their services until enough okay. people no listen. longer want to pay. Like, how do you, okay. how do you fight that? Okay. Listen, you're going, you're, you're talking about doing several layers of government at the same time, which is very complicated and I wouldn't even recommend it. What I'm saying is that, it, think about the average government shutdown, right? All of the Y2K, you can pack into that, right? It's a whole non-event for about 300 of the 320 million people in this country. It's a non-starter. So when we turn the government off for a day, who does it affect? No, 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 I'm not talking about, people? no, no, see that, that, I'm not talking about turning the government off. I'm talking about what do you, like, the, the government's oh, still going there. to exist. They're not going to allow you to do these things, regardless of how many people you have on your side. So how do you how do you deal with that in the interim? <laughs> like you, you want to start up you want to start up rival services so that so 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 the so the old ones become obsolete. Well, while the other one's still in place, they're gonna fight you on it, <laughs> claiming jurisdiction, whatever it is. You know, all things like that. As far as creating something else while the state is there, as long as it's not threatening to the state, they tend to not care. Even if they know about it, it's there. So there's no laws being broken by saying that pe uh, a massive amount of people can't get together and reorganize how this shit gets done. There is nothing that says they can't do that. They all, uh, the people have the right to alter or, alter or abolish. So... As long as it's peaceful, there's really nothing to talk about. Most of this is administrative. So you get the administrative stuff done to let people know that there is an alternative way to do this. There is an alternative service available if we go and do it. That tends to attract more people as a viable solution than what happens if we try to, if the state's going to come and get us. Because as things gain popular support, the ability, especially at the federal level, to enforce becomes impossible. Look at the Bundys, man. They didn't, they, they, they did the enforcement, but it was all after the fact because they have free reign to go roll people up one at a time. So if the feds are moving around trying to go into localities and force stuff that people have already decided is going to change, it's not going to fly. And honestly, I think a little bit, it gets lost in the political debate that the state is not this overbearing machine. At a certain point, some of the cops, they start hearing that, that Congress is getting automated. Some of the military already have. I know. I did it personally. So I'm just saying, you're worried. it's kind of like Schrodinger's problem. If we got a state problem to the level that you're talking about, we got a whole other problem set. We're not talking about administratively changing stuff. We're talking about, uh-oh, we have a tyranny problem. Like, that's that might be a war. I'm not dealing with that. It's Schrodinger's problem. No, Unless no, I'm not, up, but I'm it, not. It is what it is. But I'm, but, but I'm talking about any aspect. Because if you're talking about replacing any part of of the existing structure, the existing structure isn't holding anything but itself up in almost all cases. Okay, to give you an example, everybody piles into the system, and and we get 40 million people, and we all take a poll and say which one of all, when we list all the federal agencies, which ones would you fund if you had the option to pay for them? And you take a poll and everything down the bottom, that's the first stuff that gets cut. That's the first things that we as a group start separating on. It's not meant to be an in your face, go fuck yourself. It's meant to be, look, this shit's broken. We're going to set up a se separate system and we're going to pull out of the things that we want to fund the least first. And then as that competition for each one of those things pops up, like I said, it's U2030. It takes years to get through this. You don't just flip a switch. People have to understand what's going on. They have to understand that such a big change is even possible, let alone the mechanics of it. I just think automated Congress sounds sexy enough to get a bunch of people on board. Some people don't care how this shit works. They just care that it works. So if they want and, an app and not an explanation, uh, I can deal with that. No, and I, again, I get that. 
you're, you're, you're talking about taking one sixth of the population and declaring. Oh, I don't take anything. If they think there's so many people between okay. Bernie okay. and Trump and the others, there are so many people who are pissed off That's, that I think there's okay, just a standing okay. army of people who are ready to walk. Listen, Donnie, again, you, I, I, I think you talk about not getting the car before the horse, but I think you keep jumping the gun on this here. This is, this is the problem you and I had in these conversations that we tried to have before this whole thing. <laughs> I'm somebody who is all for mass non-compliance with the cert, with with the current with the current system with, when it comes to laws, agencies, whatever. I'm like all for that. That's like that's like what I preach. So that is not what I have a problem with. But if you're talking about and and maybe taking taking was the wrong word, but if if you're if 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 you have 40 to 50 million people that jump on board with this idea, you're now talking about one sixth of the population deciding that they don't like or they do like particular functions that the other five sixths of the population is still going to be having done through the federal government that currently exists. So you're, and then if you're talking about separate, if you're talking about now separating and segregating essentially the 40 to 50 million into smaller groups because you're decide you're figuring out who wants to fund who and like the, the like groups and stuff like that. I, I understand that concept, but now you're talking about diluting that even further. So I, I'm, I can't see how you even get started with anything when the other apparatus is still in the way because yeah, it's not in the way. That's the thing. It's not in the way. Organizing around a system is different than changing it. No, no. So we're not talking about changing the whole system, but when there's massive amounts of people who want to change and they're willing to walk away from say, we're all going to not defund the Department of Education anymore. You guys pick that tab up and then we see what happens. And we, all I'm saying is, how do you expect how do you expect the state to ever go away? I'm saying uh, gradually. You're saying gradually is not good enough. We say all at once. No, and no, all at once isn't good enough. No, I mean that's not what I'm got, saying. That's not what I'm saying though. Because again, if you take four, if you take say, say we make it easy and take fifty. So okay, you get fifty million people. You, you, and you do that poll. And it's, it's Cal Exit, man. Okay, that's but, what they're doing right now. You got fifty million people who are ready to tell the other five six to fuck off. The only thing that they have going for that particular movement is geography, and you don't need the geography for that movement. Well, no, actually, I think it's it's a lot easier when you do have the geography because, again, you're talking easier about... Easier versus possible. Okay, Donnie, you're talking about, like I said, take the 50 million number. You have 50 million people. You have this vote. Okay, say it's 30-20. Fuck it. Say it's 35, 15. You say, well, the other 15, you try to fund it and see. Okay, Wait it's not. Minute. What are you voting? Anything. Where's all this voting coming from all of a sudden? You're the one who said, you're you're the one. You're a poll. Well, a poll A poll is essentially a, poll, a vote. A, 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 no. It no, is. No, it's not. A poll is. No, it's not. It is. A poll. You don't vote a in poll polls. poll is just asking which you don't vote in polls. would you unfund that's first. Not a, that's, not, that's, not, that's not accepted vernacular that you vote in polls. Like, give me a break, man. You're trying to no, no. no, okay. uh, no you're, you're, Donnie, you're not letting me get Donnie. Poll. You're not letting me get to my point here, man. The Come on, you're doing it again. This, this, Donnie, Donnie, Hold on, Donnie. Donnie, let, Donnie. Hear me. Okay, you say it's thirty-five to fifteen million that say they don't want to. They don't want to fund the Department of Education. Okay, you other fifteen million. It's not just that fifteen million that has to fund it. It's the fifteen million plus the five six that are still out there that aren't part of your system that are already funding the goddamn thing anyway. Yes, I'm not saying it's going to not exist. I'm saying if you want it, you can have a competing system, and if you don't, how? You okay, and again, and this this is, gets back to the question that you still haven't answered. How do you get a competing system up when this when the other system has the monopoly and will shut you down for trying? Wow, Jeremy, when you when they're right now, there is not another option. Period. There's not another option. How do you know people won't go every time? There seems to be two options on the thing. When people have when people have options, they exercise them. Right now, there's nothing. There's nothing. So by creating a system that really only requires some administrative work to say, yeah, I would like a change. It's not this violent revolution thing. It's not this confrontation that everybody makes it out to be. It's a political system that people say, we would like a change. And we don't live in a place where the state just suddenly rears its ugly head and shoots people. I understand that that's what a lot of a lot of the anarchist world likes to think. No, well, no you I, can generally avoid the state I if get, you really try or if you want to. I, 
So it's not yeah, that hard the individual. To okay, again, you keep seeming to confuse a whole bunch of things here, Donnie. Because I haven't said any of these things, man, and I'm not. And no, what it's I'm saying, like you, the, you can, you can, the individual can avoid this state quite easily. Yes, groups of people, large groups of people, large groups of people attempting to to say that they don't want to do a certain thing and are going to create a competing thing to that. Yeah, the state doesn't ignore that. That's not how it works. Believe me, right. if Cal it did, exit. if it Cal did, exit going on right now, no feds kicking indoors. Cal exit is going on right now because I, they're not. I don't know what to tell more, you. People are doing it right in front of your face. They're doing it right now. Cal, the, Cal exit is largely a Soros front. Cal, yeah, Cal exit is not actually happening. And the and a, and a lot of those people who were saying that they wanted to be a big part of it, as soon as the next disaster happened, they were the first ones saying, "Why we, the feds need to send us the money." <laughs> Like, Dude, there's the a minute, whole text, and then the minute a whole, Trump oh, threatens sorry, to cut any federal funding, they'll they'll capitulate as well. The, the, like the, any listen, other of these cocks will. It's, it's not. And, me, that and, is, and and, and th listen, whether or not there's a whole bunch of people who are seriously organizing to separate California, what is that's true? Whether or not it's going to work, I don't know. I have no idea what they're going on, but I already do know that there are sections of California where California law just doesn't fly. They run on their own system in a whole bunch of counties out there, and it doesn't matter to them. They're essentially exited anyway. Now they're stuck with the federal shit. Yes, but, but they've already separated themselves from yeah, the state. Effectively. Yeah, and and why are they able to do that? Because of the because, ge because they're geographically together, which is the which is the other point I've brought up, and I kept bringing up to the past. If you have forty to fifty million people all spread out, it doesn't work the same. If you have people all in the same towns pulling this You're off, right. that's a much You're different. Right. Jeremy, story you're absolutely right i am definitely going to make a confrontation with the state where they're going to have to crack 50 million skulls but i'm not going to do it alone people are going to have to say we are not going to put up with it anymore and as far as i'm what i'm seeing on tv there's enough people who are sick of the way things are that maybe a plan b is an option maybe maybe it's not perfect but it'll work better than what's I mean, going on now. I'm all for having. You're worried about the state letting it. No, no, I'm not. I'm not worried about the nets for when the, the state collapses because Bitcoin is sitting there. If the dollar collapses, Bitcoin literally is sitting there waiting like and that something works in very the water. Well the yeah. That works very well for the state. Works very well for them because there is a way. There's already an electronic way for them to. A bunch of money has already filtered. A bunch of the fiat currency has filtered into bitcoin so if the federal government decided to just bring that into the fold and bring the bitcoin you, you never know if the miners really wanted to get on board with all i don't think they would but they'll create their own currency like competing uh cryptocurrencies are already coming out what, what so the I'm state is already is talking about technology creating already exists to replace these large facets that humanity mm -hmm. is used to right exactly. now exactly Exactly. Uh, so, so I do agree that you're on to something. I just, I feel like a lot of it, a majority of it, ha is still like whew, really if, wide if open. There's, if there's one thing I'm certain of, it's that geography is fucking irrelevant. I'm telling you. Well, I've no. Been well, okay. See, see, there you it's go again. Relevant. There you go it's again. You Listen, keep. You're, you're talking Donnie. about a jurisdiction, and I no. understand how a jurisdiction Donnie, works. Hold on a second. You just on, did it again, on. though. You called it. You, you're calling geography irrelevant. But the last set of examples that you brought up, which is pretty much all you've been able to bring up, were people that were in where geography was relevant. So I, I think you're. Well, I think you're. You're glossing well, over this too much. It, it okay, is listen, the think, geography is relevant when it comes to this think stuff. Think about where well, we're what's, at. What's listen, everybody difference? already has. Everybody already has different laws. Okay. If I'm in the city of Pflugerville, Texas, which is in Travis County, which is in the state of Texas, which is in the U.S., okay, I have four sets of laws here. What I'm talking which is about in the is UN. tinkering. What I'm talking about is tinkering with one of those four layers in a way that we're already decentralized. That layer doesn't effectively change anything where I'm at, where you're at, where anybody else is at, because those a lot of those local functions are done locally. We're talking about collective things. And if you're just saying that there's a violence apparatus at the federal level, it's going to travel state to state and eliminate one sixth of the population 
who peacefully wants to make a change. I how haven't said anything about them here. eliminating I, it. I think that's lunacy. I haven't I again. Never gonna happen. Again, I've never. I've never even suggested that. This is this conversation then goes the same they, way every if time. Not, if they're not going to do it, then how are they going to prevent this organization and then the eventual separation? When you have that many people on board, it's not like it's a secret. And then, it, then the discussion is, are we going to harm all these people or just let them do it another way? Well, see, Donnie, the first time you, 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 you told me about your idea, the first thing that thought I thought of is it would be great to have an honest voting apparatus that runs parallel beside the state. So the state has this pressure of, hey, here's the entire voting block voting on the blockchain not afraid to put their ID or whatever out there and say, hey, I'm blah, 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 and I voted for this. Here's the real tallies behind the things. Here's what government said happened. If those don't, if they don't show the same thing, then government's corrupt or the state is corrupt. And then once people can see that, holy shit, what's being voted on and what the people want isn't what's happening, and they can just see it plain as day, and it's just like, What's going on here, guys? Because there's this cloud of mysticism behind voting and the magic of the voting box and stuff. But in the end, I still don't think a system of slavery will ever be able to be work, you know, fine tuned to work efficiently or, or, you know, to what it what people want it to be as. And I'm not saying that that's what you're trying to create, but that's what the state is, and that's what we're trying to replace here. And I. I, I see your your app as or your idea as a a way to transition maybe into this localized thing, but I, I don't see how listen, how it I, could be anything I, other than uh, a way to make the state look more or be more transparent. Uh, and here's the thing: we're all going to end up in some kind of organization of this manner. You're if you're not going to leave if you're going to leave your house, you're going to pay for roads. That's the way it is. If you're going to drive a car, you're going to buy it from someone. You're going to have to go there. There's going to be certain levels of organization. Oh, the, the, the problem the, the, is the that there are levels level. of control. Right now, they are not levels of organization. They're also levels of control. Mm -hmm. And what I'm saying is the organizational level exists. I agree with all that voting stuff you said. The thing about voting is you taint that game by rigging the vote. You never ask the right question, so you always get the right answer. And everybody who is stuck with voting ends up with whatever of the two answers you choose. It's not, again, it's not the, the two party problem. It's the one solution problem that you have to avoid. So as long as you don't have a voting system where you're choosing yours and I'm choosing mine and only one of us wins, it's I chose mine, you chose yours. Yours does X, mine does Y, and we'll see which one competes better. You guys get all this fundamental stuff. So go ahead, Andrew, sorry. As far as, as doing this federally, about the the difference between federal and local like i understood that with what you were saying um but at the federal level generally like what you were saying one solution for everybody and only one side wins so how do i guess i, I guess i just don't understand how funding would work at the federal level if it's like an a la carte system where only certain regions or certain groups in different places receive certain government services as opposed to other groups in other places receive certain government services like would we just like so like for example there's like groups in california oregon washington and idaho that want a department of education but the rest of the country doesn't so would they just have their own they, federal department of education for them or is that yeah. like is that how it would work yeah they could have it like literally anybody who wants to sign up for the to, if you think about the way the Soviet Union fell apart, everybody likes to call it like the wall falling down. It was a bankruptcy. The Soviet Union went through a bankruptcy. And the first thing they ended up right. doing was selling off all of their assets to cover to cover their, their debts. And, and even then, you know, they didn't get all the money back. Anybody who had money in that or investors, like any kind of the way the money flowed, it all just went away. So to avoid getting that the way the way the federal budget is, you simply give these these organizations back to the private sector and you let all of the people who want them have them. If they can't afford them with the amount of people, then guess what? They're going out of business. That's just the way it is because not everybody wants it. Now, if enough people want it, then it stays. I And uh, frankly, I'll, be, I'll bet you dollars to donuts that the Department of Education goes away. And people will figure out how to educate their kids like they did from the beginning of time without it. 
Right. No, and, and I, we'll I, have, okay. I have no doubt. Yeah, I have no doubt whatsoever that stuff like the Department of Education would probably disappear or be restricted to like yep. California and New York. And frankly, nobody cares what they do with their money because they're basically bankrupt anyway. Exactly. Um, the, the right I, I'm to also abstain. Kind of, I'm also kind of. Yeah, the no, thing go ahead. That we really all need. We all need to the right to abstain reestablished. And doing that isn't difficult. A lot of people want that one. A lot of people want the ability to say no and suffer no penalty anymore. And we literally, we live very decentralized lives. I talk to you guys more than I talk to some of the people in Austin that I know. We live yeah, very no, decentralized lives. I completely lives agree with you. Also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's hard to grasp if you think that the system is what it is. If you really start looking at the reality versus the, the hype, man, the hype doesn't even stand up and the reality is super easy. Humans are not fucking out there killing each other in, in, here in America. They bump into each other with their cars. We have insurance. We can really get along just doing other things. The real problems that we suffer are from these systems where we're supposed to be arbitrating. Those are the things that we fight about the most. There's a couple of hot issues. I'm not saying that there isn't, but Jesus, we fight more about how we're going to operate our conflict resolution system than the conflicts we have to resolve. And my next question becomes this. So assuming that you have this like a la carte system where only the people that want a certain type of federal service have that federal service, because at that point, it wouldn't even necessarily be a federal service except for the courts acting as arbiter or arbitrators in the event of disputes between the parties that want this given whatever, you know, like say they want a right. department of X, Y, and Z. Um, I guess, how do you like, how do you establish like budgets for that? I mean, is it just, it's, I guess by, right. well, I guess it's by blockchain vote, right? Is they just the people that want it will vote amongst themselves and decide how much they want to fund and what they want to do with it and yada, yada, whatever. So that's, so that's it. So let's play Donnie fun time, right? Here's how Donnie would do it. I would establish as the, the, the second system, it comes with everybody signs in and they, it's, it's a little bit of an education, but we're only talking like three hours over the course of a year. We're not talking about a college course. Um, you sign in, we're going to credential people and they're going to act as their own legislator. First thing we're going to do is find out where all the stuff is going to go. Who's going to fund what? We'll find out what the popular stuff is. We'll find out what the garbage is and we'll get it gone. All the garbage stuff is gone. Then you come down to stuff like defense, uh, welfare. You can't, you can't just turn off social security. Nobody's going to accept that answer. So a lot of this stuff is putting it on a longer timeline and how are we going to deal with it? You end up privatizing a lot of things. I mean, straight up privatizing. Nobody wants to fund them. If anybody wants it, it gets sold off. Whatever's left over becomes private sector, whatever. Defense, I think, ends up looking like this. There's a lot of people who don't want to drop Moabs. They don't want to pay for Moabs and they don't want to pay for wars. And there are a lot of people who will. There are a lot of people who want welfare state and there are a lot of people who don't. Yeah. So I think that almost balances out. The thing that doesn't balance out is how much money the federal government borrows to keep these programs running and how much money they print to support the whole shit show. So actually finding out the cost of these services, price discovery is painful, man. So... Oh yeah, Some it's gonna be that, it's gonna be horrific. Yep. So honestly, I think what we end at end up with at the end of the day is probably just one defense agency, but then like one like the Department of Defense. And if you if you pay for it, that's the one you have. It's probably just gonna end up being that way. I don't honestly know. but that okay. That's, you could intelligently do that. You could intelligently defend defend that, North America that, with that. Of course. Well you, see, here's uh, the thing. <laughs> I don't I don't think it's even necessary. I think that that it, oh, you're right. The minute a geographical location emancipates itself from the state, okay, mm -hmm. it's going to go viral. And those who are emancipated from the state in that stronghold can fund private armies to go fight state actors in other places to shut them down. Yeah, yeah but when you have to cut a check for that every Friday, don't expect it. Listen, contribution, <laughs> contributions to the Spartan Fund are going to get real lean come Christmas time, okay? It, when people have to fund that kind of activity, they tend to only do it when it's absolutely necessary. They're not cutting into Christmas and they're not cutting into college to pay for a war that's not really near them. So it allows for a defensive structure, but it doesn't allow for yeah, but what Kickstarter revolutions does. could pop up quickly, especially if you, if you really nailed down emancipation from the state nonviolently. You could just but, then right. re reproduce that I, yeah, same but, model everywhere. 
But again, we're you still can't reproduce it because you don't have the funds. They have a they have a whole funding apparatus that no one has the right to operate. They just do it. Well, yeah, but we're we're in a point in history now where you can just make your own altcoin uh, cryptocurrency and, and that your community wants to use and only it will accept and their money is useless. Yeah, but then you can't go anywhere. <laughs> I, I understand where you're going. There's with this, exchange but rates and exchanges, so you can go places. And that assumes that somebody wants your shit coin that only works in shit town. And, and that assumes that no one wants your shit coin that only works in shit coin. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I know that value I, I, I don't. It. Yeah, but I don't know. I, I still don't like you keep saying that, you know, the, the I mean, the one defense agency. Okay. Even if that is the ultimate answer, you know, you're still you're still talking about people that did want to fund it, people that didn't want to fund it, which automatically bring brings back the free rider issue that was never actually addressed. Um, and then we're still talking, I still don't understand how we're getting past, even if you have 50 million people and saying out of those 50 million people, certain people decide they would want to fund it, other people wouldn't. What about the other five, six of the people that are still being taxed by the government to pay for the existing system already like you okay, keep acting are, like they don't get included into the pro they don't get included into the price too somehow i don't understand where they disappeared to or do they are you paying for this service alongside the state okay, just to prove a wait, point you're, you're like no you're like on the fourth question already and i gotta go back to well, no i've had, i've had no actually these no, two these two points i've, I've raised multiple uh, no, times I, and they I, keep I not getting Dave. addressed I, yeah no i had to stop Dave. okay free rider problem here's the thing if you're worried about defense to the level that you're willing to fund it even in a in a real peacetime the the fact that the guy over there doesn't pay for it doesn't really bother I, honestly it doesn't bother me i don't know how many of the actual you know warriors or and or however you want to look at it in a culture people who want to fund a defense versus demand everyone else also fund it I think that's a little. I think there's a bit misnomer there that the people who want defense demand everyone else pay for it. I, I don't. However, I do know that the people who want welfare demand that they pay for it. So I think the free rider problem gets solved with a little drug deal with the welfare agency. That, oh uh, yeah, these guys can collect unemployment for six months even though they don't pay for it. But it's done on blockchain. It's done on open, and they're getting six months, and that's it. They pay for defense. They don't pay for welfare. You get defense. They get a little welfare. We call it the drug deal. Call it even. I think it makes more sense that way. But then again, I'm talking about. Oh, there's so how many how many intelligent minds would also jump into this and have something else to add. Like well, this is Donnie figuring out basic mechanics. Not every jot and tittle for the next twelve years. No, I, I understand that. Um, uh, but yeah, but I I don't I don't necessarily I didn't necessarily think that there's enough people that would want to force others to, to for everybody to pay for it. That's not where I was going with that. It's more so the average person once they recognize that there are, are however many people that are not participating but still receiving the benefits from something like say the only defense department in town regardless of whether it's needed at the time or not because okay. unfortunately in the world stage you know, you do have to deal with other states, and especially if you're talking about decentralizing the current, the the, and trying to decentralize the the one that is you know widely known as the biggest game in town, as on the, on the world stage. Well, it becomes a, it does become a target to a certain degree. Um, so there there could there there would be a still a you know underlying threat i guess maybe not a a, a, a pre, uh, not a not one that's that's on the forefront at all times but enough of one that you'd still need to fund some type of defense but you're, you're gonna uh, have well, to pardon I, me if i think this story sounds like a rape rape victim looking for an abortion and not allowed to have one nope. i understand what you're nope, saying but nope, it sounds all, like a real nope all i'm saying all i'm saying is enough pe enough people realize that other people are receiving protection or receiving the benefits without paying more people will be like, well, why do I got to pay then? Because of rational self-interest and trying to actually, you know, trying to save themselves. Every person, every person in Texas receives a safety bonus because they live in Texas, even if they don't have a gun. Because the, all the crooks know that people in Texas have guns and the people and they don't know which houses don't. So every time they break an in or in one, they're taking a chance that that house has a gun in it. So yep. 
Uh, they, yeah. They're receiving that for free. Are we going to start trying to charge them? You can't internalize every externality. You can't externalize every internality. Not, it just no, kind of is what it is. Nobody's receiving but I'll tell that. You this all no. the people who let me tell you this all the people who want to defund defense, as you know who they are, the Democrat the, or the demographic is the Republicans. Those people, if they don't have to pay for the welfare state, and you told them you only pay for defense and you pay for welfare if you want. Even I think your average Republican walking on the street, Joe voter thinks America's great, uh, straight up standard model Republican loves that idea. That's what I think. Now, maybe I'm wrong, but I think if they only had to pay for defense and not for, yep, I think they'd love it. Well, the other thing, the other thing I would like to mention is even in acting in rational self-interest based on what, like what you were saying, Jeremy, in terms of like external threats, you know, like uh, international threats from other countries, like if, for example myself and maybe I'm more rational than the average person but I'd like to think that most people that would want to fund defense would fund it even if they knew other people would be benefiting from it because they get a yep. direct benefit from it like yep. yeah okay they you know they might say themselves, yeah you know I hate these lazy layabouts and they just get to live under the blanket of my protection without having to fund it but I'd much rather have it and not get invaded by you know but you already, Russia or whatever. But you do for the already. Same reason I have guns not. in my house and don't care if my neighbor is getting a benefit for it. But you, I would but have you a already. Agency. But you already. But you. What you just described, Andre, is the attitude that prevails right now. <laughs> there, there is a hostility about that type of stuff right now. With the the people, the people Donnie was describing, the people against the welfare state, because that's their feeling. A lot of them, like the, a lot of them, that do get charged up by the idiot talking heads who talk like that. Like that's what the that's what the all people all people on welfare are are, are these lazy layabouts that are just are, are getting are living off of you. Right, diet. I understand that, but welfare is different than defense. Like if I don't get welfare, but I have to pay for the dude that gets it, I'm not benefiting from it, right, at all. Like it, it, if I never take welfare and I still have to pay for about, it, I, I understand that. But it's it's the it's the matter. It's it's that attitude that already exists. So so when pe so when they do look at the people and say, well, certain people aren't paying for this crap. Why should they get the benefits from it? That attitude already exists right now in those people's minds. Right, I understand. That's not understand new territory that, point, that they would have the to get I'm to make, that point. <laughs> right, but the point I'm making is defense is a specific instance in which even that issue wouldn't override the desire to have it yep. like just because there's free riders doesn't mean people wouldn't want to pay for defense yep. especially you know what I mean? when especially when the drug deal is you pay for defense and you don't have to pay for welfare especially when that's the drug deal all of a sudden the defense gets a lot more awesome like i think the entire national conversation suffers from a bias of limited choices you, you describe what's happening and people assume that it is what happens and has to happen forever and changing it is a huge problem when in reality, hey. most people, if they sat down and thought about it, would like to change these things. They just don't know how. They don't bring those extra options to the table. They think all of the questions are multiple choice and anything that's not on the paper, well, I don't get to choose from that. If you get out of that and fill in your own answers, you can come up with a whole lot of other things that work for everybody instead of just some. They just don't work for Washington. Yeah. <laughs> yes, but but, which, but, which, but popular popular movements will do that, and we're already at a place in history where we're really disgruntled, and we got the technology to. I mean, listen, Brad's wife. Who doesn't know in this conversation who Brad's wife is? I don't. I, that's not don't ringing know. a bell. Two. So yeah. half of us know who Brad's wife is. Yeah. That's ridiculous. That's nothing. Like she got fired because apparently she doesn't shower or something. Like. Why do why do two people who have who are never going to see you know what it, it's the viral things that go viral? I don't understand why they go viral, but it tends to be around something hilarious or something awesome. Yeah, uh, yeah. And I think and mostly, Congress sounds fucking awesome. It sound yeah, it sounds great to us, but, but again, oh, it, it sounds great to status too when you tell them they don't have to pay for welfare anymore. And, and listen, it works out. The whole the whole calculus works out. It's it's all the philosophy of the Constitution without some of the mechanics. If you're, if that you're talking are bad. about, I, I still I still you're have about you're talking about a la carting you're talking about a la carting state services. I, I I get the idea. I just don't think it's going to work, Donnie. Even with the blockchain, why there's certain state services that only exist due to the inherent force and slavery behind statism. Which is why the first thing in the process is you get rid of things that don't have popular support 
First part of the process. Remember that poll well, we were talking about? The voting the poll, the actual... You have to get rid of the statist. <laughs> well, no, you don't have to get rid of the statist. But the pro but again, the problem... the problem their mind. The, 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 other, the, the question I've kept asking that I still don't see how you're getting around is if you have 50 million people that are involved in this system that you're talking about, you're still talking about 250 million plus that aren't, which means the current state is still taxing... You're right, that. civil war. Fuck it. We're going to roll up the carpets. We're going to quit now. We're going to have a civil war. Fuck I, it. I, I, you're right. I, we'll just, we'll not, we'll go I, ahead and accept that as the future that's going to happen. You just have to do something, man. And this is definitely something. It's definitely in the correct direction. And, oh, maybe it doesn't okay. work out. Dude, I don't know. you're so if defensive you about this. I, you, every time, who said anything no, about it's fucking not, war? Listen, I hypothetically, it's not even did, a point. Actually. It's what if you don't get people to do it? I don't know. What if? <laughs> it's not even a, it's not a point. It's just that, well, well, what if? I don't know. I don't know. Well, no, no. Th I, these are viable questions again I, but again dude you're talking again you're talking about i i said i already said accepting that 50 million people buy into your system you you're talking about 250 million that aren't that this okay. the current state is still taxing and already funding these things and even if the ones that that, the, that even if 40 million of, the, of those 50 million say they don't want to fund a particular thing anymore even if it's 45 million well that means there's 5 million that do and 250 million that are still getting fleeced for it in the first Was place less, so less how does that how does that system actually go away so 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 in what rational self-interest does somebody sit there and get fleeced by an old system when there's clearly a new system that doesn't fleece so there's no fleece. system here yet all you're talking about wow. is is people is people voting so, in yeah, a voting Jeremy, in a I, don't, I don't even get the, the i don't get the advantage of having said system to rely on i have to provide it first before i can even have the discussion is that all this i no the system's still going to be there and people are still going to be get taxed to pay for it even if 50 million join up like i like i don't understand why this question is so hard to actually answer and well, you keep getting I, Jeremy, defensive what, about what, it every what, time no, i try to get every time i try to oppose it you just did it you did it with the whole war, civil war thing you get jeremy, defensive. jeremy no no i i brought in the civil war issue. no 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 was, he was, was talking me, but <laughs> You, yeah, it was no, a direct earlier, response to I, me, though. I, mentioned it. I understand that, but it was a direct, direct response to me because it has been every time that I've tried to get through this fucking point. This system, you're talking about, like, even if you get these people, like I said, even if 45 million say, no, we don't want to pay for this anymore, that's great. They're not going to, and they won't actually get aggressed upon by the existing state because that number, the, they don't have the enforcement capability to do that. I understand that very well because that's why I preach noncompliance in the first place. I don't argue right. that point. However, okay. the 250 million people that aren't involved in your system, a majority of those are still getting fleeced in some way or fashion in order to pay for the existing system or anyway. So even if there's only 5 million of your little group that isn't, that is still willing to pay, it's still getting funded. So how does the system, how does that current system okay. actually go away? And yes, you because do need I'm something for, for people to go to. I'm looking for my own personal freedom and looking to give other people the opportunity for their own personal freedom. I am not trying to slay every goddamn dragon on the planet. That's why. If the state exists and it doesn't affect me, no offense, I don't fucking care. There's not much, as long as it's not all up in my business and I have an opt-out option, fuck yeah. I don't, listen, I'm not saying I support it. I'm saying literally, I don't support it and I can't slay every dragon. It's a cultural change. It takes a while. I, to, you, I, I don't understand how 250 million people see that they're getting fleeced for a system when there's a whole bunch of people who just opted out and are giggling about it and they don't go with them. I don't see how that is even an option. Uh, Which I think it was the point you were trying to make in the first I told, place, Donnie. That's I what told I was trying Donnie, to say. I told Donnie this, that as long as it's decentralized, aka headless, that it has a chance uh, because the the future for any kind of resistance to the current state apparatus is going to be decentralized and headless and uh no one can shut it down if as many people and, and all of that knew. stuff there's a lot of that stuff right now that's in the that's in the the wings waiting what you're talking about probably already exists not trying to burst your bubble it's just hasn't seen the light of day yet and i don't think so the the big well i mean I'm, I'm at the plus. There's Listen, people out there automating there's, factories. I guarantee you automating government and state workers are, are, are high on the priority list. 
It, it is, but the thing that I'm noticing is the only places that seem to be successfully doing it are blockchain. The, the country of Georgia has now started putting its property deeds on the blockchain. Yeah. Well, yeah. if you deed that, if you deed on the blockchain, you don't need all of the support structure. You don't need the courthouse to have deeds anymore. You don't need the county to be in charge of deeds anymore. You don't need it. all of the county structure that goes with keeping track of deeds and all of the land rules that go with what the county does with land. So because you can deed that out for certain things, you could deed out an easement. To give you an example, if let's just hypothetically say Donald Trump wanted to bring back some money from overseas, right? And he convinces Jeff Bezos to bring all of the Amazon overseas money back for say the federal road system. So he sells the interstates back to the merchants. They get something tangible for the money. They bring it back with no tax penalty and they gain a steady source of revenue, which the roads have to be maintained anyway. Fine. Now the roads are privatized. You pay for them penny a mile, whatever. But that's one thing that's out and one thing that's in. And that thing just gets deeded as an easement on the blockchain until flying cars, you know, like until land travel is no longer relevant. You and that and that easement can then go away. Works for me. Works for everybody except for the people who rely on deeding job, deeding property as a job. Except for the people who rely on coordinating government contracts for uh, doing interstate roads, those people's jobs are screwed. But all of the other jobs are still there. People got to live. Roads got to get built. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, and that's actually what. And that's going back to what my my initial uh, question was about. You know, uh, the resistance by the state. It's not. It's not you know, the U S army suddenly be like, Oh, well, we can't have this. No, it's all of the bureaucrats who are going to be put out of work by the fact that they don't have jobs to do anymore. That are, right. that would be the issue. That, that, that was all I was trying to, to mention was to bring attention to the fact that automating Congress would necessarily also automate a lot of administrative functions that go along with Congress. So that's, yep. that's where the, that's where you'd see the resistance. That's where you would yep. get a lot of the hemming and hawing from. Yep. Honestly, the, the biggest... Which I'm the fine with. Don't, I don't care because that's the biggest yeah. source of waste in, but, in government but honestly, bureaucrats. But here, you're right. But the thing about that whole thing is you can't throw them under the bus either. Any solution that looks like one whole group of people going under a bus, I guarantee never happens. So you have to kind of look at this as a long-term project where certain bureaus get closed, sold off, handed over to the... Handed over... Just to, to give you an idea, I don't care if the Department of uh, Education is just given to the DNC. You get the mortgage and the property. Here you go. See you later. And now the DNC has to deal with it. Now they got their own problems these days. You know, two years ago, that would have made a lot more sense. Just saying, right. if the RNC wants to pick up certain programs too, I don't care. Whoever wants to fund that can go do that. But it will get these things on a budget. It will get the way that things get paid for on a budget because we can't put money there we don't have. We wouldn't be able to print it into existence. So it's like a... We don't know what our we don't know what these services cost. We have no idea other yeah. than it, we, what we paid plus the debt. But then again, the, we don't know what they've been spending money on. So we don't know what got paid for. We don't know how. We don't know what got printed. The whole thing is done by special monkeys. We can't have special monkeys anymore. And we definitely can't have this the veil of secrecy. Because that's just, I mean, the money is just going to keep disappearing. Well, my <laughs> question is, are the special are the special monkeys paid for by the special interests, or are they just... A special monkey is a monkey know, that I'm can just, make I'm law when you can't. You. I know, I'm <laughs> okay. just fucking with I'm you. Sorry. I mean, I, <laughs> this is the conversation where nothing, no stone goes unturned. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and no turn goes on stone. So. Yes. <laughs> it's a great song by Spongle. <laughs> No turn unstoned. So I, I do get that it's a big Twinkie, but if you think about it in its base terms, legislation is really simple. You could do it with your tribe. You, you and I could write legislation together if we had the time. If we template it out real quick, we could all do our own legislation in about three hours. It would require about 30 minutes upkeep a year. And all of the laws that get like somebody would, you wouldn't even be able to get the you can't smoke pot law. You could get all the people who think you shouldn't be smoking pot to try and enforce security on that. Best of luck. Nobody cares that much for it. Not even the prohibitionists care that much for it to cut a check every Friday. Which, Not yeah, which is funny because that's exactly what I've been saying for a long time is like once you, once you actually get, once you're forced to pay for the things that you, you quote unquote yep. want to, to have happen, it becomes extremely cost prohibitive. Article one, like, section like eight. Eight. Article 1, yeah. Section 8 is 100% pure Karl Marx, 30 years before Karl Marx was ever born. Yep. 
There's yep. socialism right there in Article 1, Section 8, and it causes a whole lot of problems. I'm not hating on the Constitution for what it was in its day. It was the Cadillac. But, w- but it's not the philosophy that's the problem. It's the mechanics. We have to fix how the machine functions, not what the machine is supposed to perform. It's, it's certainly, a, ste- right it's certainly a huge step in the right direction. If, we, if it can happen, it would be a huge step in the right well, direction. Like, I think it would have a snowball effect. Yeah, and well, yep. we, we should probably, get, I mean, we've had some technical if- issues tonight. So for anybody who listens to this, and if, I'll do yeah. the, I'm going to do the best I can with it. But you know. so, so here's but, my pitch, ready? It doesn't take a whole bunch of people. It takes $1. Literally, because one guy giving me $10 million purchases this project and a whole bunch of people immediately hate it. That's why I'm not looking for investors. One person, one dollar. If we can spread this around for enough dollars, and I put a big bucket in there. I don't even care if it gets filled. Anything over five million works. But I can't do this just because. This is a nat- this is a big Twinkie and it needs like it, it just needs funding. I I have overhead like I'm about ten grand in the hole already just doing it and I haven't worked for four months, so it's a big thing. And if you put a dollar in the bucket just to explore a new idea, that's it, that's it. And it'll get up if we get enough people who are interested. And if not, that's it. It doesn't. It doesn't. All right. Well. Well, I'll share it. Fuck yeah. it. I'll share it. I, I I think it's worth a buck. I think it's worth a buck just to see what could this perform if it exists. That's it. And I know how to do it. It, it, the, Dave, to answer your question before, it, from what I know, um, private blockchain kind of applications are very difficult to come by. There's one game in Austin that's doing it, and they're one of the people in the country. Like, there's one of, the, I think, three, and they have a perfect product for this kind of thing where you document stuff. Um, it's basically just an open records documentation system. It's not a cryptocurrency, but it functions the same way on the blockchain. All the blockchain nerds really understand how it functions. So... It, it, the system works as well as blockchain. It's just understanding the philosophy. And then, it, honestly, it's more of a mental break. It's the Berlin Wall. Think about all the laws that got broken the day the Berlin Wall came down. East German, West German, international peace treaties, they're all gone. But no, that's how the whole thing really looks in real life. That's what civilized humans making political change looks like. It doesn't look like the DEA kicking in the door. But then again, I don't think the DEA gets funded by the time it comes time to kick doors in. So, you know, well, maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, well, you know, I I, well, I, I hope I'm you're not. I hope, find out. I hope you're not. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, <laughs> I, I've told I've told you all along, Donny. I I mean, the the end game. I I like the idea of the end game. I just I still have. I I mean, I don't honestly feel like either my question, any of my questions, got answered anywhere near to that. Listen, I understand, but but well, some of the questions are only relevant now. They're not relevant in a world where a lot of people have accepted that a change is going to happen. And the Berlin Wall happened almost overnight, but it didn't. They were all staring at each other across that wall for a while. And these people have been voting each other into an empty bowl for 25 fucking years now. So I'm wondering, you know, they've been passing the hemlock every election and every time somebody wins because it's fair. So I'm wondering when they're going to stop passing the hemlock around and quit all this fairness talk and get back to intelligent solutions, meritocracy. We will fund the good shit, not any shit. Well, I don't know. See, that was that was the promise of Trump, and uh, so far that hasn't been on on some levels. It's looked great. On others, not so not so much. And my but, promise is, I can only give you a solution. I can't make it for you. Uh, I can I can put it on the table for you, but I can't make you use it. Excellent. True uh, enough. Well, True enough. On, on I can that, dig that. On that note, uh, we should probably get wrapping up. So, Donnie, well. Even though uh, I got myself a little heated here, uh, it was. Uh, I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad he came on. It was. It was, it was an interesting conversation, and uh, I do wish you the best of luck. And I have, you know, I'll, I'll help. I'll try to help you spread it around and see. You know, hopefully, that kind of friction tends to add like polish. So it's good. It, it keeps the it keeps the conversation clean and honest. So this is true. This is true. So. All right. Well, uh, do you just want to do? Do you have a URL you want to shout out really quick? I mean, I'll put everything. Um, in the show my notes. website is direct-republic.com. That's the overall concept. Uh, Indiegogo. Just use uh, search U twenty thirty Y O U two zero three zero. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Facebook. There's some videos there. They are really TLDR. They are for the people who want to know um, the people who like that their cell phone works and don't care how. Those videos are for them. Anybody who actually wants to know about it, uh, you could PM me on Facebook. And I, I have a bit of a white paper. It's 
a little long. It, I, I'm still working on it, so but it, it's there. Like it's intelligent. It's just not really, really super refined. It's only been through one session with Jeremy worth of polish, not three or four. So <laughs> I'm, I'm still, I'm still getting a couple of burrs off it. But it, it's still an intelligent product. Anybody who wants it, just uh, message me on Facebook at the U twenty thirty uh, page. All right, excellent. All right, uh, Andre. Dave. Hey, go to Indiegogo. It's only a dollar. Yes, yes, and I'll, I'll definitely put all that in the put all that stuff in the show notes. Uh, Andre, Dave, anything before we close out? Uh, you know, uh, not much for me other than uh, thanks for coming on, Donnie. Uh, you're always a, a ball of thunder. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, thanks for uh, you know your continued. Uh, love of spreading the ideas of liberty because I, I think that's what's at the the core of, of of this. And thanks for thanks for having the the for the the thought and the drive to try and make this happen. Well, I, I know I talk about it. I know Jeremy does. We we all do about you know having to having the drive to make liberty a reality and to to make these things these concepts and principles that we want to live by a, a real thing so that we can experience them in our lifetime or if not our lifetime, then the lifetime of our children and their children. So I'm happy to see that you're, you're doing something with that. That's, that's awesome. That's great. Hey, it should be applauded. Hey brother, nobody sacked Washington in 200 years. It's about time. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> it's time we go. You know what I'm saying? Let's get Hell that yeah. shit cleaned up. I, it's it's possible we we can be Jetsons anytime we want, but you know that transition could get rough. I would prefer not rough. So, yeah, as, as smooth as possible. Although I'm sure it's going to be bumpy. But yeah. all right, well, thank again, you, gentlemen. The, thank you again. Thanks, Donnie. This is uh this has been great. Uh, this has been the Seeds of Liberty podcast. All of our information can be found at that horrible website known as the Seeds of Liberty dot com. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's horrible. Our Patreon and our and our Patreon page is still up. We're uh, still working on getting more content out there. But uh, speaking of hashtag, please donate. Uh, hashtag, please donate. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So thanks for thanks everybody for listening, and we will catch you next time. Peace. Peace. Gun Training with the Non-Aggression Principle, Volume 1. Basic Handgun and Rifle with Jared Waltz. First rule of being alive is you own yourself. A groundbreaking approach to firearms and self-defense training. Beautifully filmed and easy to understand instructions make this one a must-have. Gun Training with the Non-Aggression Principle, Volume 1. New DVD from Michael W. Dean. Available on Amazon. Are you sick of government lackeys who say you didn't build that? Are you tired of elitists who think you need a government permission slip for everything? Everything you do is an A to B conversation and the government should see their way out of it. Create true free markets by adopting the BIPCOT No Government License. The BIPCOT No Gov License allows user modification of any product, service, or software except by governments or government agents. Go to BIPCOT.org. That's Bravo, India, Papa, Charlie, Oscar, Tango.org.